Hello everyone and welcome back to Juno New Origins where we have a contract to fly by Luna and that is worth 50 million dollars so probably after this I won't have to worry about money ever again. Uh, we, we've had some tight moments but uh, yeah 50 million is quite a lot. We'll see, we'll see but that's my uh, instinct for this that that's, that's going to be a lot of money. After all, our current rocket here is 108,000. We'll see what I need in order to fly by Luna. Just as a review, we'll see where we are in the tech tree. Of course, we've got that. Um, and then we've got backyard scientists, check your staging, chemistry lover. Catch them all, we don't need its parachutes, unless we wanted to recover the Luna probe after its flyby, but we don't need to do that. Soft landing, we already have, so we could land. Uh, packing it tight, uh, we've got the fairings, thankfully. And we've got RCS, which will be good because I will not use the gyros. Um, we will use RCS for maneuvers. Though, accidentally, if I time warp while having, uh, what you got, one of the orientations on, it will automatically turn to that. So, I can't do much about that. It won't consume RCS like that, but that is how it is. Uh, anyway, uh, these uh, allow us map view and displaying orbit lines. But I, I don't think we have... It says display orbit lines, but I don't know if we can... Look, plan maneuvers is up here. So we don't have enough sufficient tech points to plan maneuvers yet. Um, so we need 70 for that. So we're going to be doing it without being able to plan maneuvers. So with that in mind, we're going to have to pack this with a little bit more Delta V than I otherwise would need. So this was able to get to orbit. Uh, a flyby would normally take maybe 1,500 meters per second more. And we'll, we'll definitely want three stages. Remember, the general policy is that for each stage, we want about as much uh, delta V as 10 times, well, as the exhaust velocity or 10 times the ISP of the engine. And so right now, when we take a look at our two stages, this one has an ISP of 220 seconds, and I've got the Delta V at 2,200. So, yes, that's right. And I'm uh, squeezing a little bit more out of the second stage. 2,750 is what we would be aiming for there. Uh, but we have an extra long burn time in order to get a little bit of extra oomph from it. But we could take some of that Delta V out and put it into a third stage and that would be perhaps more efficient. So that's what we're going to do. Let's move this aside for now. So, uh, we could put it into a fairing. Uh, in fact, we have two CubeSats here. Um, what I previously did, let's get rid of the fairing. I'm gonna make this a smallish probe. And this is a good time for the spirit engine. As small as possible. Well, I mean, mod propellant. Well, it'd be simpler with the mod propellant, but the efficiency is bad. Well, you know, 205 is not the worst I've ever seen. Uh, the simple, the way it's simple is that we can just put the RCS without having separate mod propellant tanks. So, but um, we're not getting as much delta V as I'd like out of this, so we'll just scale it up here. I want this to eventually be a lander stage. Two, so we want it not so tall and as wide as possible. Fuel line. Let me put a fuel line through there. Fuel line. More fuel lines. All the fuel lines. Okay, and let me just put mono propellant. Okay, and then we put more. Okay, it is adding delta V. All right, so that is counting. Twelve minutes of burn time, though. I mean, that's fine and all, but maybe we want a larger one of these. I'm gonna tuck the engine in a bit. If we eventually want this to uh, be a lander stage, then this is probably okay as far as thrust to weight ratio is concerned. We also have infinite throttling, so that's all right. Okay, in the core, we don't have any gyros, and we'll just max out the battery. I don't know, maybe we don't need that much battery, I don't... I mean, it says power consumption is zero. So... We'll, we'll say 50% battery. That gets us close to a decent Delta V. Okay, and then RCS, because otherwise we in theory cannot turn. Let's 
small as possible. They haven't changed the fact that these are probably OP for this purpose. And I'll put little prototype RCS tanks just in case we decide to switch fuels later on. Okay, well these are pretty expensive. Three uh, sorry, 6,250 apiece. We don't have to settle fuel down or anything like that. So I think this should deal with our control just fine. I hope. Alright, that's the theory. It should be able to come up with a combination of thrusters to do stuff. Still, it's pretty expensive already. But 1590 was less than I wanted. Okay, so let's say we have that. And we'll need another inner stage. Oh, no you don't. <laughs> no, not that, not that, not there. Bad inner stage. There we go. Okay, stage 2 is now underpowered. I mean, under thrust. And possibly underpowered too. So here we can get 279 seconds of ISP from the Gnome engine. And, well, maybe we can optimize that by reducing the throat size a bit. We can get up to 291. How powerful was that little guy? That's only a 286 newton thruster there. I just noticed. And that means that the actual engine up there is less powerful than the RCS thrusters, which are 500 newtons. <laughs> um, hmm. And they have the same efficiency, 205 seconds. Well... That sort of makes this pointless, doesn't it? Oh, I'll leave it. But, you know what? We need to... Limit those little RCS thrusters somehow. Oh, uh, we, we can reduce the power here. 10. Yeah, 50 Newtons is fine. Let's just limit those so they don't guzzle up the... The mop propellant too quickly. Everything 10? All right, that's probably better. This is just about right right now. There we go, that's practically perfect. Now we gotta watch out for the 10 meter limit here. So stage one looks good, except the thrust weight ratio is not good enough. And we've maxed out the size of it. We've still only got pressure-fed engines. Well, we're gonna have to have more than one then. There we go, they should share those little spherical tanks. We'll pretend it's a single unit with four chambers kind of thing. Then we'll even have roll control. Well, at sea level that's still enough thrust-to-weight ratio. Uh, these two stages can get us into orbit. And if we could plot a maneuver, that last stage could get us to transfer. But we can't. So we're going to be doing that blind, and that could cause complications. Also, the fact that it's going to be a 13 minute burn time in order to transfer. Maybe I can make that engine bigger. Will that hurt too much? I mean, it's smaller than the RCS right now. <laughs> okay, it's a 1 kilonewton thruster now. Maybe I shouldn't reduce the throat size so much. Oh, but the efficiency goes down pretty quickly if I change it. Okay. We could use care locks up there, but maybe we'll save that option for if this doesn't work. Okay, so this costs 288,000. Not too bad. We could afford 80 of these or something like that. And... Alright, let's try it. Well, we, maybe we should paint it for once. 
No, no. Alright, we'll, we'll just take that for now. Pluna. <laughs> Purple Luna. Pluna. Alright. Here we go. Now, the village pad is at an inclination. It's at 25.6 degrees north. So that's going to be interesting. Oh, it's um, it's glow in the dark again. That's fine. That makes it easier to see. Okay, so map Luna set target. Okay, so yeah, Luna is equatorial. We are up here. So what we want is our when we cross the equator, we're going to want that to be uh, where we're going to do the transfer. And I'm going to assume that Luna is going to take about 45 degrees to get to where we're going to be at. So uh, we want to launch not from here, but after a little while. So that when we cross the equator, we can do our transfer. Since we have a glow-in-the-dark rocket, I don't mind launching at night. Not only is it not a secretive rocket, it's a blatantly not secretive rocket. Hmm, this is all eyeballing, so... I want to give myself a little bit more time, potentially. Okay, this might be good enough. Alright, we just have to go east, so throttle up. Civilian assist. And... Go. Oh, I don't have the RCS on. Oh, what button is that on? Okay, no. Don't have to worry about the fact that we can't see the landscape. You just get a better view of our purple rocket. Hearts are taking heat damage. Oh, okay. Okay, that was weird. Distance flying, okay. Three minute stage, 3.4 minute stage. Battery's already at 99% though. Nope, oh, let's get a little bit more. Thank goodness we don't have engine ignition limits. Alright, that's a nice little orbit there. And let's see about that transfer, shall we? So, yep. Oh, can I? No, it just pretends like I can plot. I can't actually plot. But it does show the approach info when I hover over this. That's something. Um, but yeah, once we're over the equator on this side, we'll transfer over to there. And maybe that's a good thing to do. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. It's, there's always a possibility. This would be a good time to look at the location there. Okay, we're getting closer to the equator now. Um, maybe I'd want to be a little bit further. I think we're still a little bit too close. Uh, we might be too close to the moon, but let's try it. Okay, so... Okay, that's that stage. And now our little pixie engine. Not our spirit engine. I always think of it as pixie for some reason. Well, at least they'll show us where the closest approach is. Oh gosh, why is it turning? No, 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 no. RC, uh... Okay. Apparently this doesn't have gambling. Okay, please hold. Use that RCS, please. Okay. Brigo. Why didn't we go to Brigo first anyway? So, 34,500 kilometers. No, that's the distance, not the actual orbit. The actual orbit is 35,100 kilometers. Very close to what would be Earth geostationary orbit. We've almost got the same thing where 
uh, when Luna rises is the right time to burn for it. It's probably a good approximation if you need that. But of course the key here is to make sure that you're over the equator at that time. Otherwise you will have a weird inclination with it. Assuming you're launching from the original the village pad. Okie dokie. Uh, we, we're, we're, we're too early on the burn. Uh, oh wait. Oh, maybe not too early. Okay. Hmm. That was unexpected. <laughs> okay. But we've got an inclination. We've still got a lot of inclination. Because actually we were past... Um, we were past the equator at the time. But this is fine. Because we just need a flyby. We could correct it. 567 should be able to correct it. But this is nice because after it, we automatically get disposed of. So that's good. I didn't have any requirements to get closer, so... Should be able to fulfill this. The Pluna! Ladies and gentlemen. Pluning along, if you will. Okay, we've got Luna Flyby 1. Okay. And yeah, uh, I don't know if I want to mess up the impact over there. Let's just do that business. Get some photos of the far side of Luna. I don't know if it's tidally locked or not. Okay. Targeting village runways top. Yeah, you do that. Let's see how well you do that. <laughs> anyway. It's pointed right at... Right at Drew. Like it's attacking... This Brigo. No. <laughs> Let's see if it survives. Oh, what happened to holding prograde? We have RC. Oh, we have no battery. Oh, okay. Well, so our battery life somewhere around there, our battery died. So, we got better watch out for that. Okay. Well, parts exploded. That's nominal. Alright, let's end flight. Okay, more Luna things? No, come on. Um, I don't care about CubeSats. Uh, refresh. True Orbit. Come on. Well, we got some tech points, but not enough to get Maneuver. Maneuvers. We've already got soft landing. What are we even doing? What are those contracts? Can overcomplicate things and have a side interstage and a boosters and everything. I don't care. I'm gonna land on Luna. Um, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade this to which might call it Carolox, I think, and then we gotta try and land. On Luna. That's as small as we can make this one. Uh, that's not small enough, but we can reduce the throat size. I don't know if we need more battery, but we might as well... Well, we've got some more available volume. Let's just pump it up. Okay, a little bit underwhelming on the Delta V. And we should probably increase the size of the tanks that have our RCS propellant. Since we're not carrying mob propellants in the main tank. I guess that's okay. Okay, now we have more Delta V. Would it be enough for a landing? 
and you know we, we're not carrying any landing legs so we're just going to like plop on the surface and that'll be that if we roll over that's okay we, we're we're expecting to tip over that's fine in this case uh, we are not against tipping over this is a good policy to have when landing on moons it's actually cheaper than the previous one <laughs> I don't know how that happened um, Let's see, we have some extra height to work with. Looks like both the second and first stage could do with some more capability. Now, well, stage one is pretty close now. Okay, well, this is this is definitely going to be Pluna 2. And even though they're not giving me a contract to do it, I've got tons of money. Let's just try and land on Luna. Okay, let me just make sure to turn the RCS off. And... Hmm. Village Runway looks a little bit different at this time. Okay, alright. Uh, throttle up, and stability, and... We have no contract. Go! Rolling. Oh, this is not the right time though. Oh gosh. I spent all that time explaining when to actually time your launches, and I didn't actually do it. Well... We will, uh... We'll just figure it out. We'll do an off-plane transfer. This is when you haven't timed your, <laughs> your uh, launch, so that your position at the equator is the right place to transfer. It's fine. We can figure that out. It's just not ideal. And I didn't turn as quickly as I should have either. No, don't take heat damage. Okay, well, that's inconvenient. We may have lost some Delta V there. Apparently those engines do not like to cluster. How bad off are we? I'm, I'm contemplating just restarting this particular attempt. Uh, timing wise actually we're not that bad. It's just the first stage exploding might be a problem. I think we can add thermal protection to the engines so we probably should. Well, we'll need to keep. Uh, we'll need to complete orbit with the "quote unquote" lander stage. Maybe we can just thrall down with the first stage engines to avoid exploding. Okay. Okay, a little bit more lopsided this time. But that'll be good enough. That leaves us with 1,850 to transfer with. And yeah, uh, Equatorial seems like an okay place. Let's time warp to it. No, oh, says Luna's there. So maybe... Uh, yeah, somewhere around here would be good. This takes a long time to burn, so maybe I should start now. Oh, no, go, go. Okay, uh, I'll turn on RCS. I'll turn on RCS. Okay, we might be carrying too much RCS propellant. We'll start at 5 degrees north. Okay, go. Only 758 newtons. At least it's efficient. Okay, time warping while burning. Because this is going to take a while otherwise. We really want this to hit Luna properly without having so much inclination if we were going to intend to land. Oh, that's a little bit further away. 
just started earlier. Basically when Luna was coming up above the horizon was about the right time. Inclination wise, it's a little bit high this time, so we were a little bit late. No, please. Okay, well, that's not good. We're ending up all the way over there when it's here. We'll have to go past. So yeah, this is this was a late burn. The stage was just too much longer. Here we've got an encounter. Okay, but that's not good good. We can probably... I don't know whether we should do it at our mid-course or up there. Probably mid-course we need to bring that closer. So let's do that. But do we have enough battery power to go all the way up there and make that correction? We only have 499 meters per second because we had to overburn, so we're probably not landing. But we'll see what we can do anyway. Let's get a closer look at Luna, as it turns out. So, RCS is still on. Which one of you is the one I want? Okay, that's the way to go. Maybe we can impact Luna. Luna impactor, sort of like Ranger. Maybe that's good enough. There we go. Luna impactor. Just barely. We've got 432 meters per second left to slow down, but according to that, we're going to be coming in a little bit hot in order to, you know, make that a safe landing. But what about our battery? That's ticking down. But we don't technically need to have battery power when we crash into Luna. Uh, it'd be nice to have it just so that we could say that we took pictures and everything. That's an interesting question. If the if you have an onboard camera, does it still work when you're out of battery power? Hmm. Well, it looks like we're okay on battery, actually, because we pumped it up. If we had only 50% battery, we'd be in trouble. Okay. Well, um... Just point retrograde. That's really what we want. We're carrying way too much mob propellant. So our impact point... Well, it'll be in daylight. Unfortunately, not lucky enough to accidentally hit one of the flags, but actually the North Pole's not bad. And maybe even in line of sight of Drew over there. Unfortunately, it's all dark coming in. Uh, the camera... okay, this way. Only light when we get close. So, do we get moon rocks or lunar rocks thanks to parallax? I assume so, right? We probably are coming in too fast to actually notice, though. Okay, well, 57 second burn time. I don't think we're going to make it. We might as well start. But, yeah. I don't know how much we lost with the first stage exploding. Probably a chunk. But we're looking at, let's say, at least 800 meters per second more that we need for a landing. It will count this as a landing, right? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Ah, it tended to burn pretty well, actually. Exploded on impact. No, it's not a landing? Ah, oh, well. Oh, well. Okay, so, but we had our first Luna Impactor, and that's what counts. So, with that, and with Drew over the surface of Luna, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please see them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.